Yeah. All right. Even if you really want to. What's on? Oh, okay. Yeah, no so. sunglasses for me. <laughs> Hi guys. So today. Also a hello for me. Yeah, today's in Houston. But today, Jason and I are going to talk about taping and tacky application for stone events. So one of our favorite topics to talk about, really. Uh, there's always lots of question of what type of tape to use, how to tape yourself, and then also why to use tacky, and sort of how to apply it properly so that you're not, number one, covered in tacky uh, at the end, and number two, so that it actually works and works well for whatever your event may be. Thanks. <laughs> it really was. Um, so, uh, why does one of you use tacky? To assist with grip, and because everybody else does, so don't be a fucking hero and think you're gonna be awesome. I heard that using tacky is cheating. Oh, it's not. Everybody else uses it. It's like using um, a belt. Yeah, yeah actually, that, that's a really good analogy. I think that your technique and your sort of outcomes change by using a piece of equipment. And all the strongest people in the world agree that like there's a, a plenty of good times to wear a belt to be sweating deadly. Right. And I think there's not really any great stoneworker out there who like just exclusively never touches tacky. Uh, what tacky does is it increases your grip, which means that you have to rely a lot less on your upper body to mold the stone. And you can focus a lot more on utilizing your hips and yeah. your legs to do what you know you might be desperately trying to do with your elbows. Um, if, if anyone has ever told you that stone lifting is dangerous because you can tear a bicep, it's probably someone who doesn't use tacky often or doesn't want to apply it well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're overusing your arms because you have a weak grip because you have no tacky, um, yeah, you are in danger. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be very foolish to never train with tacky. I also think it would be very foolish to only ever train with tacky. Yes. That will definitely probably leave you with just a weak upper body at some point. And that's, uh, if you're watching this because you're a beginner woman and strong man, uh, you probably already have a weak upper body. So don't exacerbate <laughs> that situation even more. Right. Uh, we usually train, uh, we usually start stone training by, well, with some curls. Number two, uh, doing sort of tacky with flights. Are you going to try some push down right now? Oh. Go on, go on, go on. So we do uh, tacky, free stone loading. Um, we do still tape up because there's tacky on our stones and uh, that just really hurts to rip all your forearms get off. So we'll touch on that later. Uh, and then when we're doing more specific event training, we will start training with tacky. Um, but if you're a beginner, it does remove you to try doing some tacky free stone loading to get a bigger back. Because that's just what you need in life in general. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Okay. okay, so taping. Yeah, how to tape. Hot tape. So, so hold on one second. Yeah. I'm gonna go over the other side of the camera and make sure you're like in the camera. Why don't you move in and we'll okay. so we can actually show what we're doing here. So, so come at me, bro. Tape it. No, move forward. Uh, keep moving forward. You're so close. Good. Okay. Turn to your left, 20 degrees. Beautiful. Now we'll see your right forearm. Okay. Perfect. Are so, we gonna start on your left though? No, not really. Um, so with taping, there are a couple of considerations. Number one, the type of tape you use. We usually use uh, like athletic tape that's kind of clothy. It's really nice. And Jason's gonna baby powder me. This is not that weird, actually. Mm. Now he's making it weird, so that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not terribly unusual. So baby powder, the purpose yeah. is so that the tape doesn't slip off of your sweaty, sweaty self. Honestly, it's really not for that, so that you don't sweat inside the tape and get really itchy and really freaky. Uh, if you're gonna have to wait uh, 20 minutes to an hour to do your stones because um, the promoters are fucking up, or if you're gonna do like five or ten sets or something like that, it's gonna be like an hour, this really helps because like yeah. you will sweat inside the tape and it will get really weird and itchy. Also, if you have arm hair, this will coat like the hairs mm -hmm. so that basically the tape will not stick to your hair. It'll get powder on it and, it and it won't stick to your skin or your hair. So this will keep the tape from sticking to your skin, which sounds like a problem, but the truth is, is the tape sticks to the tape. So right. when you start your tape job, right below the elbow-ish, somewhere like right here, right? First thing that you've got to do is overlap the tape at least one kind of full rotation so it sticks to itself. Once it's stuck to itself, and presuming you've got any sort of change in width from here to here, 
it won't move too much. And then you can start taking down the arm, which Gabby will demonstrate now. Yes. So I usually just start by pulling a little bit of tape out and then starting, like Jason said, by not doing that, um, sort of below my elbow. And now I'm too sticky to do it. Not sticky enough. I'm not sticky enough. Okay. So I always go a little bit like that to start yeah. I usually try to overlap um, a pretty decent amount because again, you, you don't see. want any like gaps there. Yeah, you can see, stop for one second just yet. It's like maybe a quarter of the tape is overlapping to a half, depending on exactly you know, where she lines up on each stroke. And I'm also taping a little tight. So not too tight that I'm cutting off my circulation and that I can't move, but there is a little bit of a compression element to that. There better be. We hope so. All right, so if you uh, if you lift stones without any tape or really anything else on the forearm, what you're going to find is, in your technique, you're crushing with your forearm into the side of the stone. In order to create enough pressure to create the friction you need to not lose a heavy stone to just slip out of your arms, you're going to have to press into it very, very hard, which is going to result in bruising. Yes, there's going to be some bruising. Um, the tape minimizes that. I stop just below my wrist. Um, because I want to be able to move my wrist so I can dig under the stone, right? And I need to move it to regrip and things like that. Uh, you kind of have to experiment and find where that little sweet spot is for you. Also, I stop the tape on the underside of my arm, sort of just in line with my wrist here. Um, you can stop it wherever you like. I usually recommend sort of not being directly on your bottom forearm or on, yeah, or on the back, depending on sort of what you like. So that is how you tape. All right. All right. So the reason we got the tape, we got the compression, right? Mm -hmm. This is going to reduce or eliminate bruising, right? And this is not, there's a practical reason for this. If you literally bruise this area, you're not going to have a good time training the stones no. again while it's still bruised. And if it takes you a week to get rid of your bruises, that means that you cannot train stones twice in a week. Right. Um, when we train for contests, especially ones where it's like, like reps for over bar or something like that, and it's more of an endurance related thing, we tend to train more frequently and with a little more high volume. So it's like if you get bruised up, it fucks up your training. Mm -hmm. All right, the next thing that's really awesome about this, um, and this is true for men and women, but again, the more hair you have, the more true this is. When you put tacky on, what you're about to do? Tacky on All right. By now, I'm about to do This is a spider tack. Yes, my preferred um, tacky. Yes, it is her preferred tacky. It's not his. Um, I, any any tag is pretty much true. Uh, yeah. Spider has a unique texture, the, but basically when you put a dab on, you you want it as thin and as like widespread as possible. If, if it was possible to spray it on in like one even like light thin layer, that would be ideal. But it's not. It's just big blobs of boogery shit, right? So when you put it on, you're gonna have to smear it all around. If you do that on your bare skin with the force required to do it, you're gonna pull the skin back and forth. And honestly, you, you you'll fucking tear it. You'll yeah. get all red and rashy or you'll literally take skin off. Yes. This will allow you to put the tacky on and smear it as hard as you want across the tape. If you did a good job taping the tape on, the tape won't move. And so you can smear that tacky out nice and thin. You go ahead and do that. All right. So I usually start, so spider tacky is super stretchy. Um, other tackies are not quite like this. And it's also really warm in our gym right now. So this is really sticky and spreadable and great. Um, if you're at a contest and it's in the winter or maybe it's just not that warm and you want to make your tag super spreadable, go sit it in your car for a little bit before you start your event um, and then run out and get it right before or use a hair dryer. This is Jason's sort of um, super secret is we will use a hair dryer to warm our tag. We've also used a microwave before too uh, in the winter when it's really, really cold. But you're, yeah, so in our, like just off camera to the right is our microwave. We just throw the jar in there for like 30 seconds and soften it up a little bit and start putting it on. Mm -hmm. If it's still cold in here and it's not enough, we'll go right somewhere where there's an outlet and you just put your you put your tackied up arms in there and just run the hair dryer over it for like two or three minutes and it, and it gets hot and it will just spread like blood. Yeah. More of a concern, uh, you use what, Elite Tacky? I use Elite. Because he's Elite and shit. Um, but <laughs> that isn't quite as like sticky and spreadable like this is. It smells um, great. It does smell pretty good though. So I usually just take a small amount. Like you can see, I don't really have a ton. I can't open my fingers anymore. Um, but I usually just actually spread it between my fingers and kind of coat like my arm, right? And then I just take my palm over it and just kind of wiggle back and forth. And this also serves to help heat up the tacky. 
And again, spider tacky is super stretchy. So when I take my hand away, it literally just stretches yeah. all over. I will acknowledge that this is easier to spread than yeah. the Elite. Um, the, the Elite is a little bit. The Elite is really nice on your hands so though. Um, that's kind of the way I like to use it. As far as where you want to put your tacky, uh, the majority of your tacky should go kind of towards the top of your wrist and the top of your forearm. I usually don't put a ton at the bottom. So Gabby's, I think, peak speaking from uh, personal experience. I would amend that to say it should go where your your body contacts the stone. Yeah. Right. So like in my forearm, this fucking bulge is there right here. Like I want to put a lot of my tacky like right here because there's a big surface area for me. But she's gonna be scooping under a smaller stone because she's weak, the little girl. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, like when she goes yeah. to contest, her stone is 16 inches, mine's right. 20. So, so like I'm out here like this like barely, like barely touching right by the elbow, she's scooping under. And so it's a different technique, it's a different uh, application. So you right. need to, basically through experience, you're gonna learn where you put the most pressure on the stone. That's where the tacky is most important. Everyone is gonna put their hands on it. Yes. So that's always true. Yes. You wanna have a nice thin spread over all of like the big parts of your hand that touch. And by spreading the tacky, I've actually got a decent amount of tacky on my hands. Um, and you can see here, this is like a very thin layer, but if I touch it, like look how much tacky there is. Like that's super spready and nice. This would be uh, like really good for maybe a short flight or something like that. I'll oftentimes take a little bit more and apply it just below my wrist because again, like Jason said, that's my biggest point of contact. So I do a little extra there. If I'm doing an event like a flight or stone for reps where maybe I'm gonna need more tacky, I usually just take a small amount and put it sort of on the back of my forearm where nothing's gonna touch. That way, sort of that piece is important that it is still kind of a glob. Yeah. So one, you can find it really quick, and two, like when you grab it and you pull it off, you're gonna pull off like a hunk. Yeah. And I um, and it's really nice to sort of do that. I just put like a big hunk there, um, because you can just, like Jason said, put your hand on, grab it, smear it around, and keep going really, really critical in stone for rep stuff, especially if you're first or um, the stones are very, very dusty and maybe not sealed because yes. you will sort of get magic vampire. Yeah, and hurry up, wait, wait, no, I need to hurry up, get behind me. Okay, so, sorry. You will become a rock man because you'll get concrete shit all over your tape and yes. decking because yeah. the stone just crumbled in your hands. Yes, and it really sucks, but it's going to happen. So this is our seamless uh, re-entry to where transition. our camera died. Um, yeah, and so we had taped a few more minutes of talking about uh, how to take the tape off. Just unroll yeah. it off your arm. Imagine I have tape on. Well, how to clean up. Yeah. Yeah. So we were just talking about that. And show them your forms. You can still see the tape lines and stuff. Yeah. Like, when you take the tape off, uh, everything that was on top of that is gone. Yay! But that's Yay, pretty easy to clean. do. Obviously, you're still gonna have a lot more tacky still on your hands. Mm -hmm. And we were just in the process of addressing how to clean that. Yes. Um, it is like a pine tar resin. 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 It's a resin-based product. And anything that is um, has an alcohol or like fat basically in it, um, chemically will dissolve it. Mm -hmm. uh, so got lots of options. Yes. Um, so the classic WD-40. Uh, ask your uh, uncle. There's probably some in the garage. <laughs> uh, this will work. Very um, well. Yeah. Smell like a mechanic for and, and yeah, a couple hours. There's, 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 there's guys that are into that. Um, uh, our preferred option around here more is uh, the baby oil. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. Um, it, it works. It smells a lot better. It does. Uh, somebody brought this out. So that is my, uh, that's like a tacky remover that I bought. <laughs> I, I can't like believe it. people pay money to like to, to get like a product. It's like baby oil with exfoliant in it, and it smells delightful. Exfoliant, also known as playground sand. Yes, it's okay. fantastic. If I you like would it. like to get into the business of Tac Attack, um, don't tell NeverPlateau.com that I said this, but um, you go and you buy yourself uh, like the gallon size one of these, and you go to Home Depot and you buy a 50 pound bag of playground sand for $2.99. Put it together. Yeah, and then you put the two together. And you make it smell nice. Yeah, and you sell this for a couple bucks. Yeah, and, it's and, pretty cheap. Uh, Bob's yeah. um, And then we also. This but this is, is totally different. Jason's preferred method. This is totally different. Um, well, this is just a canister. But <laughs> inside it is baby oil. Um, and. What's up? Open up your hands. Oh, I guess I'm going. Are you all clean already? That's quick. 
Okay. Uh, inside this canister is um, coffee grounds, uh, like from Starbucks. You just ask them and they give you their spent grounds. Mm -hmm. um, mixed in with baby oil. And it's kind of 50 50, so it's like a thin mud. Um, the baby oil acts as uh, you know, an exfoliant, it actually rubs the clumps of goo off. Um, Pretty nice. And it smells good, and it's like oily, and uh, it like it's really moisturizes nice well. your yeah. hands. This is, like, uh, I actually I went to a coffee shop one time, and they were like, dude, you can just wash your hands with coffee grounds. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really good. <laughs> it so, is. So, uh, this works well, and it like treats your skin really well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Lots of options for tacky cleanup when it comes to that. Um, all right, if you don't like doing all that shit, um, there is one more option. You could just buy a pair of sleeves. Which we love. Are these ones? Uh, yeah, they got the cut velcro. Okay, will you take it? Yeah. All right, so uh, I own a pair of these, and Gabby does too. Mm -hmm. And Gabby uses hers like pretty frequently, right? Yeah, I, I don't once a week. I, I kind of use mine for training because it's super convenient to put it on really fast. Like when I'm like, basically it allows me to not put tacky on my hands and stuff. Um, and I can basically just slap this on. I get some uh, protection from gross stuff in my arms. I get some grip. Um, it's kind of halfway between like taping up and really doing tacky stuff and not. Um, and so like we were talking about programming earlier, kind of early in this like season or off season, you might do like tackiless training. I'll, I might use this for training because it's, again, it's it, the tape job it takes some time. Yeah. Um, and this you just put on, you do your sets and you take it off and you're done. Uh, what it does not provide much of is compression. Nope. Um, and they have to fit well, or otherwise they slide around a lot. Yeah. Mine bunch up a lot like this. Um, Mine just, aren't so bad. I don't know. You've got it at your forearm's too small. I think, well, I think my wrist is too small is really what it is. Like, but the, the difference in size, what? The wrist curls. The, I, I don't know if that's how it works. I think that would actually exaggerate the problem. I think it would. Okay, so anyways, um, the slope. <laughs> The, uh, the angle of my dangle is, they just don't fit right. And so I don't really use them for anything serious. I would be scared to use them like in a contest. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, am I gonna make this lift? I wouldn't use these. I'd actually go back to tape when I compete because um, I know how to do it just right. Mm -hmm. um, but these are, are super convenient for like, just for training. And here's something to consider. A roll of tape is $3.99. Yeah. Um, we just used a, a third of it to roll mm -hmm. of tape just to make this one-arm video. Um, you will go through almost a roll of tape almost every time you train. Mm -hmm. So after 25 um, training. stone training sessions, which if you're a serious athlete, you're going to get to, uh, you will have bought more tape than it would cost to just have bought a pair of sleeves. Mm -hmm. So there is an economic argument to investing like the $100 into finding a nice pair of sleeves. Yeah. They come in Velcro, they come in lace-up. Yeah, the Velcro is... It's a medieval and cosplay, you know. <laughs> Renaissance. Uh, the Velcro is really nice because you can do it yourself with the lace-up. Um, you have to have somebody else really do it for you. I've used mine in a contest before where I just had three stones, it was a carry and load, and that was fine. I wouldn't, again, like Jason said, use these for a reps competition because uh, they can slide up and bunch a little bit. And I've got tiny forearms, I've tried to cut the Velcro to make them fit, but really worth it if you train stones with any sort of frequency. All right. Yeah. Tape it up. Tacking it up. Tacking it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. That's it. That's Shit. Wow, okay. Yeah. Great. Go team. Oh, hey, wait. What? Do you want to say anything about... No, we're good. Go okay. Like us on YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff. Yeah, those types Yay. of things. We got to say stuff like subscribe that. Subscribe for more videos. Yeah, subscribe for all videos. Yes. Go back and watch every single one. There, each one is better than the next. Yeah, and there's an entire stone loading tutorial that we have up on the YouTubes. Um, so once you learn how to, is it on the Strongman account or yes, is it, it on? Is okay, now. cool. It's really good. It's really good. It's really, really good. And Jason, thank you. So yeah, that's it. Bye.